So today we're going to try something a little bit different. Um, we, after going through our demo machine, and we have it all taken apart like this, and it's not always you get to see the way it's put back together, or even when it's taken apart. So um, today we're just going to put it all back together, video it in real time, and fast forward through the boring bits. So we'll see how we go, all right? So here is where the, the drum slides in. It slides in here and it's held in with two pins. And this is something you won't see too often. This is exposed. This is one of the wear plates. And you can see it's actually coated in tungsten carbide. Tungsten carbide actually covers most of the heavy wearing parts on this machine from the base plate all the way up to the top of the spout nearly. <laughs> So this is the main electrical connection to the drum, but uh, this also connects through the drum to the feed roller. So the metal detector and all the communication like that comes through this line here. And so this is the little connecting rod that uh, tells the machine what position the drum is in when it's working. That's it. We have five pipes that are connected from the drum to the machine. And they're all numbered, so you can see B2, B1, and they have the corresponding ones here. So which one have we got? There's A1, there's B2, so that one goes in there. And they're connected by flat place couplings. That connect pretty easily. And we have A2. It's an A1. And we have a grease pipe here. Now the grease pipe has to be tightened, because that's be usually be under pressure but there's another grease pipe here and you can see that they both have different connections so as not to get m mixed up So this is the main drive belt. This connects the drum to the main gearbox and uh, it's in one piece. And once the machine starts up, this will tension itself as well. Right, so I can uh, stick in the grass channel next, right? So this grass channel is, uh, you can see the back of it, that's the tungsten carbide there as well. And the function of the grass channel, it takes the spot of where the, the corn cracker would go normally. But uh, seeing as how we don't need it for grass, it's called a grass channel. This couldn't go in before now because it's actually held in where the drum is. Follow me in, you can see there is Right here, you can see this is where the grass channel is going to go. But you can see these two chains here. They'd normally be used for carrying up the corn cracker, or even holding it in position if you're using, if you're going between um, a grass channel or a corn processor when you be doing whole crop and things like that. So. Loosen this bolt, and tighten it again. Same the other side. It's 
while we're in here, we just want to show you something else. That this is the, the back plate for the blower. That's what it's called. And uh, you can see this is actually spring loaded. So the very stream works on the base plate, but it also works here on the back of the drum. So if you meet a lump or whatever, the back plate can move out. So you can see the springs that are on it, and that's enough to take the strain out of the load for when the, load, the lump is going through. But also, you'll see this motor here, you won't see that too often either. Now this is for uh, adjusting the amount of blow you want. If you really want a lot of blow for blowing maize or blowing really dry grass, what this does, it moves this eccentric lever here that pushes in the bottom of the blower plate so it directs it more into the blower to give you more blow. Do you know? Um, yeah, it can be quite useful in certain situations. This is the in inspection plate for the tower and it's held on with three bolts. Well, it's not really held on with three bolts. It is held on with them, but you don't have to open them to get in. So you just slide them in position and twist this little lad here. So that's something if you want to inspect. If you've got a blockage or you want to see what the, the paddles are like, what way they're lined up, you can look in there. But when you're taking it off, you don't have to open up the bowls completely, so you're not going to lose them. This is really a dust cover is what this is. It's to keep the air clean, that, uh, that this rotary screen is sucking in, because it would take the dust from the ground otherwise. You can also see here, this is the, this big spring here, that's for a breakaway on the spout, in case you caught it in anything, a pole, tree, whatever. Um, next to go on is the feed rollers, okay? So before we push them in, I just want to show you a few things on it. So you can probably heard it before, but uh, very unique to the chrome machine is the six feed rollers. So you can see them here, and they're all joined together in one, and the same on the bottom, right? So this is to, and the big compression spring here as well, all aids to compress the crop. And the idea of it is, is that the more you can compress the crop, the more you can take the lumps out of it, and the easier it is for the drum to chop it down. Um, just before we shove it in, just want to show you here the drum that we have it in place. You can see the drum is actually sitting pretty much nearly in the centre of where the axle or a diff would be in it. And you have that is so you can make room for the six feed rollers. And it's also, that's where it pivots best, that it's not um, dozing it or whatever. And another thing about the drum before we uh, close it up with the feed rollers is that you can see here now we have our knives. That's our full knife in and that's our dummy knife in, right? And that is for a, a grass setup, so we can have a wider range of chop. But you can also see this drum is a bit different. So it's uh, the knife hangers are above the knife. So that does a couple of things. It, it means that then there's more room behind the knife. So right here, that's the dummy, but there's the knife. You have loads of room behind it because normally the hanger would be underneath it and that would take up all the room from the knife. Also what it does is it is, um, makes the securing the knife stronger. That if you do meet an object or whatever, that you're not relying on the bolt to hold it in place, you're relying on this big hammer as such. And when you, hopefully you don't meet for an object, when you do, it should splinter off. Do you know what I mean? Instead of most of the damage of a rock doesn't come from the rock, it comes from what it breaks in the drum and then that goes up to the blower. So yeah, that's we're ready to put on the feed rollers now. So I'm going to try and line up the feed rollers. You can see this part here, that lines up with this hook here. And uh, so I'm going to have to start the machine in a minute to line them up. So this here and that there lines up. And it's a couple of square pegs, you'll see them in a minute. That's what holds the machine in place. So yeah, but you won't be able to hear me when I have the machine running doing that.
So the feed roller has four pipes as well. Actually five, sorry, for the grease pipe. But a little bit different. This has a male and a female because it has charge pressure for uh, keeping the locking pins closed all the time. You'll see them open in a second. But they are all labelled the same so you can't get them mixed up. D1. Grease pipe that has to be screwed together. So that's us nearly complete. We just have to reattach these couple of hoses onto the header, and that's us ready for the next lot. And I think I wasn't checking my watch too much, I think that was an hour and a half from when we started, and that is not going in, there it is. That's that. Touch. Okay, ready for work. <laughs>